Richard II is a man in love. A man in love with show, pomp, and ceremony. A man who abuses power. A man who doesn't listen to any advice. A man who taxes his country too much. Spends more in peacetime than other kings might during a war. Because as he sees it, he can never lose his crown. Why? Because God has chosen him personally. Why? Because he's God's deputy on earth, and therefore doesn't need to lift a finger to defend himself or his country, even at a time when it's just been invaded. <laughs> big, big mistake. And by now, it should be pretty clear that Richard is a terrible king. You see, he's almost Machiavellian in the respect that he will do what he sees fit for his country, whether or not it is morally sound. Now, this sort of hubris usually leads to some formidable tragedies and drama. If the King of England isn't king anymore, what is he? He says himself, I must nothing be. I have no name. And now, in prison and deposed, Richard II of Bordeaux plays with ideas of desperation, rejection, and loss. What must the king do now? Must he submit? The king shall do it. Must he be deposed? The king shall be contented. Must he lose the name of king? Or in God's name, let it go. I'll give my jewels for a set of beads, my gorgeous palace for a hermitage, my gay apparel for an armsman's gown, my figured goblets for a dish of wood, my scepter for a palmer's walking staff, my subjects for a pair of carved saints, and my large kingdom for a little grave, a little, little grave, an obscure grave, or I'll be buried in the king's highway, some way of common trade, where subjects' feet may hourly trample on their sovereign's head. For on my heart they tread now, whilst I live in buried ones. Why not upon my head? Let's stalk of graves, of worms and epitaphs, make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills, and yet not so, for what can we bequeath save our deposed? bodies to the ground, and nothing can we call our own but death, and that small model of the barren earth which serves as paste and cover to our bones. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the deaths of kings, how some have been deposed. Some slain in war. Some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed. Some poisoned by their wives. Some sleeping killed. All murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court. And there, there the antic sits, scoffing his date. Grinning at his bump, allowing him a breath, a little seed to monarchize, to be feared and killed with looks, infusing him with self and vain conceit, as in this flesh which walls about our life were brass impregnable. And Hubert to us comes at the last, and with a little pin, bores through his castle wall. Farewell, King. 
Cover your heads and mock not flesh and blood with solemn reverence. Throw away respect, tradition, form, and ceremonious duty. For you have but mistook me all this while. I live with bread like you. Feel want, taste grief, need friends. Subjected thus, how can you say to me, I am a king, king? 